What's up guys, after nearly a year and a half, Carbon has finally released a new line of paddles. After the fiasco over last year with the Carbon ban, I was really curious to see how Carbon would survive. Even after releasing new compliant paddles, it seemed like the interest decreased significantly after Yola came into the picture. Well, Carbon just dropped the new Power Series paddles denoted with an X at the end of the name, and they are really good. Before we dive in, I just want to say two things. If my voice sounds a little bit weird, I do kind of have like a flu fever-ish type thing right now, so... If I sound weird, that's why. And then also, if you do plan to pick one of these up, you can use code PBSTUDIO on the Carbon website to receive 10% off your order. The specs are as follows. $229 price on all of the variations. The 1X is the elongated paddle, while the 2X is the standard shape. Then within those shapes, you have a 14 millimeter or 16 millimeter version. The 1X models feature a 5.5 inch handle, while the 2X are 4.75 inch. Grip circumference is 4.25 on the 1X and 4.125 on the 2X. They're all polymer cores as well as a Torre T700 carbon fiber face. The weights are between 7.9 and 8.1 ounces, and the swing weights for each paddle are as follows. The 1X 16mm is 123, the 1X 14mm is 117, the 2X 16mm is 109, and the 2X 14mm is 103. The 1X 16mm is only a few points below the Hyperion CFS 16mm, and I've seen several mixed reactions about this. Some people feel it is quite close to the Hyperion head heaviness, while others don't think it's as bad. For me personally, I can tell it's on the heavier end of swing weights, but it wasn't that bad to play with. I could just tell that my hand speed was slightly compromised. The 2X models are significantly lower in swing weight and will feel very fast in your hands, but we'll revisit some of that a little bit later. Now, Carbon made some really nice upgrades to these paddles that I appreciate, and I think most people looking for a paddle will appreciate as well. The new Power Series feature a one-piece unibody design where the paddle face material extends through the handle to reinforce the area that would snap on a Yola Hyperion CFS paddle. It also features a technique called thermoforming, which is something you're going to see me talk a lot about soon. You know how if you take the edge guard off of a paddle, you'll be able to see the exposed polymer core? On these, if you took the edge guard off, it would be completely sealed off. This helps strengthen the entire paddle and makes the face feel a little bit more stiff. To prove how much more solid these paddles are, here's an Instagram video I posted of me trying to snap the handle. Gosh, this feels so wrong to do. I actually don't want to do this. Whatever, we're going to do it. All right, so probably about here. Oh yeah, that snapped right away. So uh, I mean, it's not, I mean, it's broken. I mean, that handle's busted. All right, this is the most wrong thing I've ever done. I really don't want to do this, but for the sake of the audience, I'm going to try and snap this paddle. And uh, just to prove if it's durable, if my knee loses here, you guys are covering my medical bills. Oh, gosh. Okay, right here. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah, the paddle wins. Now to be clear, there are three other companies that are doing a similar variation or the same technique of thermoforming in their paddles. That is Vatic Pro, 6.0, and Legacy. I hope to have reviews or comparison videos of all of these soon, because they're really nice paddles. So stay tuned for those, but do just be aware that there are a lot of similarities between those and the new Carbon Power Series. Because of the thermoforming, the polymer is no longer exposed in the handle and it helped make the handle size smaller. As a result, it's a proper octagon shape and feels very solid. Again, this is a welcome upgrade after we saw dozens of paddles cheap out last year by leaving the core material exposed in the handle. My only complaint is the Carbon 2X handle. It feels like a square in my hand. Hand. 
If you unwrap it, you can see it has bevels for an octagon, but each side of the handle feels nearly identical in width, and the bevels are pretty small. Combine all of that, and the grip feels like a square that doesn't feel great. Now, to be fair, I am being a little bit nitpicky here, but if the grip is something that is important to you, then you may want to be aware of this. If I wrapped this with an overgrip, it would probably be better, but while playing, I could tell a noticeable difference between the 1X and 2X handles. The final defining feature of this paddle is the edge foam that's injected into it. Just like the Yola Hyperion CFS, that's what Carbon's doing, and as you would expect, it feels great. So I don't have a lot to say currently about that, and we'll probably revisit it a little bit later. The Carbon Power Series has brought another level of spin to T700 paddles, and the results are as follows. The Carbon 1X 16mm is 1720 RPM. The Carbon 1X 14mm is 1786 RPM, and the Carbon 2X 16mm, unfortunately I haven't gotten to test every time I went out to go and play, I kept forgetting to run this through a spin test, but I will try and have that result in my spreadsheet that will be linked down below, and you can find the result there as soon as I add it. But for the Carbon 2X 14mm, that achieved a very high result of 1843 RPM. Spin on all of these feel incredible. You're able to bend the ball a ridiculous amount with these paddles. During your serves, drives, or even roll volleys, the ball dips very aggressively. I don't really have any other words except that the spin is phenomenal on these. Now, I do want to put a disclaimer in here. As you can see, the RPM numbers are very high on this paddle and much better than what we've typically seen of raw carbon fiber. Because of this, I got curious and used my Starrett SR160 on the paddle, the testing device that USAP recommends that you use, and in my testing, these paddles were over the legal limit. Another independent source told me that their paddles failed as well. I spoke to Carbon and was told that my paddles were tested before shipment and passed using an even more accurate meter than the SR160, which has a roughly 5% variance. So take all of this for what you will. I also want to be clear that I am not USAP. These results are my own, they're not official. So USAP has the final word on all of this. And even though I followed the guidelines on how to use this device as best as I possibly can, I'm not the one that makes the final call. So just know that USAP approved these. So maybe there's nothing wrong with them, but I did just want to note it in case people were curious why the numbers were potentially so high for a raw carbon fiber paddle. When it comes to the 1X models, despite having power in the name, these paddles are extremely well balanced in terms of power and control, specifically the 16 millimeter. I found it very easy to block, reset, and dink with, but because the swing weight is higher, you have a lot of plow through on the ball, which means you get good power because the ball isn't resisting the paddle as much when you hit it. It's not as soft and plush as the regular raw carbon fiber paddles like the Vision, Electra Model E, or even the original Carbon series, but it retains plenty of control. The new Power series just feels stiffer across the board. On the original Carbon series, it feels like the ball sinks in pretty deep and gives you a nice plush feel when the ball comes off, one that's very easy to control. On the 1X 16mm and 14mm, they feel stiffer and it seems like the ball wants to get off the face quicker. In my opinion, the 16mm 1X is one of the best blends of power and control that I have personally hit to date. With that being said, the balance of power and control is highly subjective and will differ for each individual. I would put the Carbon 1X 16mm between the control of regular raw carbon fiber paddles and the power of a Selkirk Vanguard Power Air. It doesn't go to either extreme, but it strikes a very good balance. The 14mm definitely has noticeably more pop and feels even stiffer, so just be aware that if power paddles are not your thing, I would probably not recommend looking at the 14mm very much. I gravitated towards the 16mm 1X the most. Everything about this paddle is just so much fun. My serve might be the best it's ever been with this paddle. In the dozens of games I played, I would score several points in a row just from my serve alone because of the additional spin and power. I could swing as hard as I wanted and the ball would drop right at the baseline. The only other paddle that feels this aggressive to me on the serve is the Selkirk Vanguard Power Air. The amazing thing is, it's so easy to go into defense after being aggressive with the 1X 16mm, which is something that you can't really say about the Power Air. The 1X 
14mm is also excellent and shares many of the same characteristics, but you get even more power. I had a slightly harder time controlling drives and dinks, but that's to be expected with a thinner paddle. Hands battles were great with the additional pop though, and the slightly lower swing weight. The main difference I found is that because the 14 millimeter is stiffer, it felt slightly less forgiving and solid than the 16 millimeter. Outside of other paddles on the market that I haven't gotten to spend much formal time with yet, like 6.0 and Legacy, the 14 millimeter 1X is probably the most powerful raw carbon fiber paddle I've hit to date outside of the Pro Kenix Black Ace. With the extra pop and phenomenal spin, I could easily see this being a top tier singles paddle. And the same can be said about the 16 millimeter, but you just won't be as aggressive with it as you are the 14 millimeter. Most people looking to purchase one of the 1X paddles will be best suited with the 16 millimeter. While I enjoyed using the 14 millimeter and adjusted to it without too much issue, the 16 millimeter always felt like the better paddle. I think the 14 millimeter will provide more power than the average player wants. Now let's talk about the Carbon 2X model. Like I said, I spent most of my time with the 1X line since I prefer elongated paddles, but I did play several sessions with the 2X and wanted to share a few important details. The big thing is that the 2X has noticeably less power. It's still more than the original Carbon 2, but compared to the 1X, I found that I had a more challenging time getting my serves to go as deep and drives didn't feel as penetrating. And this is probably due to one significant factor. The swing weight is just much lower. If you recall from the spec sheet, the Carbon 2X paddles have swing weights of 103 and 109. For your reference, paddles between 100 and 110 feel very easy to swing, and the 1X 16mm was 123, which is a significant difference in swing weight and will allow you to plow through the ball much more. Anything above 120 is on the higher end of swing weights for pickleball, and anything below 110 is leaning toward the low end of the spectrum. Unsurprisingly, a non-elongated paddle will have a lower swing weight, but to have a 14 to 20 point difference is very significant in how they're going to perform for power, and I could feel it throughout my entire play test. As I said just a minute ago, the 2X still has more power than the original Carbon 2 by a decent amount, but it's just less than the 1X. The bright side of the 2X is your hand speed will feel much faster than the 1X, and you can customize the paddle with lead tape more because you still have some wiggle room to play with in the swing weight. With the 1X 16mm, no matter where you place the lead tape, it's probably going to feel like a noticeable increase in swing weight, but with the 2X, you could place the lead tape in several different areas to get the customized feel that you want and still have great hand speed. If you are already using a Carbon 2, you're likely going to prefer the 2X. I wasn't a big fan of the 2X, but that's probably just because of my bias towards elongated paddles. The sweet spots of the new Power Series are very good. The injected foam provides a very consistent feel across the face. While I still believe that the Hyperion 16mm CFS is the best sweet spot on the market, these aren't very far behind. The Hyperion has a consistent feel all the way around with a slight drop off on the edges. On the new Carbon Power Series, it's more off-putting at the edges, but still better than a paddle that doesn't have the edge foam. Overall, the sweet spots on the new Carbons are quite good, but just be aware that like most paddles, when you get out to the edges, it's not going to feel amazing. The new Carbon Power Series are good, like really good. The easiest way I can describe it to people is a more powerful Yola Hyperion CFS with better build quality and higher spin. The amazing part is on the 16 millimeter, you don't sacrifice much control despite having power in the name. But as mentioned earlier, these still aren't as powerful as a Selkirk Vanguard Power Air or Pro Kenix Black Ace. So don't let power in the name convince you that it has no control. Pickleball Effect uses the term all court paddle in his reviews to describe paddles that are more of a blend of control and power. And that's how I would classify this. It isn't as control oriented as a Selkirk Labs Project 003, and it isn't as powerful as a Pro Kenix Black Ace. In my opinion, it's one of the best blends of power and control I have experienced in a paddle. And I don't say that lightly either because every single company uses those exact words in their marketing. And most of the time, it isn't true. But with this, I just felt like I had access to both when I needed it, at least for my specific type of play style. The only downside is the higher swing weight of the 1X 16mm. 
It's close to the Hyperion, so if that was an issue for you, I would be cautious about that. It wasn't a huge issue for me, but I think there are a lot of people where it may feel too hard to swing. I'm really not sure what more you could ask for from this paddle. It has some of the highest spin I've ever tested while using Torre T700 instead of a generic, one of the best build designs to date, good sweet spot, and options in shape, thickness, and swing weight. Carbon has taken all of the small things that people wanted improved and implemented them into these paddles. Is there anything innovative, new, or fancy in these paddles? Not particularly, it just does all of the things it needs to do very well. If you were in the group of people who broke Hyperion's left and right, I recommend looking into this. While there is an adjustment coming from a Hyperion, you hopefully won't deal with snapping handles anymore and have overall better performance. Now with all of that being said, there's one small issue for Carbon with these new paddles. That issue is the other companies I mentioned previously, Vatic Pro, 6.0, and Legacy. These paddles are all using the same or similar concepts as the new Carbon Power Series, but they're considerably cheaper. Vatic Pro is about 140, Legacy is 150, and 6.0 is 160. I haven't gotten any playtime on the Vatic Pro yet, but I have hit the 6.0 and Legacy for a few hours, and I can definitely say that these paddles are easily on par in performance with the new Carbon Power Series, but they just happen to be $70 to $80 cheaper. Some of you may think because of the cheaper price, they don't perform very well, but so far that has not proven to be the case. I'm going to work on reviews of Legacy and 6.0 soon, but I can't promise a date on when that's going to be done. But for now, I can confidently tell you that these are fantastic paddles and they are priced way more affordably. In fact, the Legacy just became the highest RPM paddle I have ever tested, coming in at 1903 RPM. So stay tuned for that review. So with all of that recent knowledge of those paddles, I have a hard time wanting to recommend the Carbon for $80 more. The performance is there, the paddle plays incredibly well, and I love using the 1x 16mm. It's just that there are similar paddles for a cheaper price. So take that for what it's worth to you. If I had to go to a tournament tomorrow, I would personally be taking the Carbon 1X 16mm because I really enjoy using it, and that's a paddle I've been playing a lot recently. But more time with the Legacy and 6.0 may change my mind on that. The final thing I want to stress about with all of these paddles is that they are more poppy than what you're going to be used to coming from the original Carbon series, Electrum Model E, Yola Vision, and other standard raw carbon fiber paddles. So if you aren't looking for more pop, then these may not be for you. A number of people ordered the 14 millimeter carbon power series and found it far too powerful. So keep that in mind when you're looking into these. I would tell almost everyone that you should start with the 16 millimeter version. I think that's the best one in the lineup and the one I had the most fun with. And like I said, I think it is the better blend of control and power. Unless you know without a doubt you're a power player and want all the power you can get, Go with the 16 millimeter. So there you guys go. Those are my thoughts on the new Carbon Power Series paddles. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to click like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.